A travel guide for Singapore. This video highlights the major attractions of Singapore. In 10 minutes, we're going to cover the following sites. We'll start by visiting the Merlion, Singapore's mascot. We'll visit the colonial district where Singapore began. Then we'll head on over to Chinatown, which is one of the cleanest Chinatowns in the world. Then we'll visit the colorful streets of Little India, followed by a visit to Kampong Glom to see the Arabian community in Singapore. Then we'll head over to Orchard Road to do some shopping, followed by the Marina Bay Sands to see Singapore's best night view. For animal lovers, we'll see the world-famous Singapore Zoo, and finally, we will depart from Changi Airport. Some other major attractions that aren't covered in this video, because I have separate videos for them, are Sentosa Island, the Gardens by the Bay, the Singapore Cable Car, and something everybody should do while they're in Singapore is eat at a hawker center. Click on any of the videos on the screen to watch them or find the links in the description below. Before we visit the sites, I just have a couple of introductory points about visiting Singapore. Singapore is a country of rules and you need to follow them. One of the most interesting ones is on the metro, they do not allow durians. This is a particular type of smelly fruit for those who don't know and you can't even bring the fruit on the metro. That's something. The other thing to note is there's also a $150 fine for not flushing a public toilet. So make sure you flush and don't carry those durians on the subway. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Before we go on, I need to, I need to wipe off my sweat. Okay. So, what you need to know when traveling to Singapore is it's really hot. So you're gonna need to dress really cool all year round and bring a towel to refresh yourself. In front of the Fullerton Hotel is the Merlion, the half fish, half lion, which is an icon of Singapore. And the Merlion is what you need to come and see. There are three Merlion statues here. There's this Merlion, there's one on Sentosa, and there's a little Lego Merlion over that way. So a neat place for a stroll in Singapore is along the Singapore River. There are the Keys with a number of restaurants. There are also a couple of historic bridges. That one is the Elgin Bridge, which is the oldest crossing in Singapore. There's another historic bridge. The Kavanaugh Bridge. Uh, this bridge was built in Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, then it was put here. It uh, has been a pedestrian bridge for a very long time and actually there's a sign on it that forbids the passage of cattle and horses. Along the Singapore River is also a statue of Sir Thomas Raffles commemorating the date in 1819 when he landed here in this small fishing village, made it part of the United Kingdom British Empire and uh, turned it from a sleepy fishing village into the metropolis it is today. Or at least that's that's what the sign says. To experience some of the local Chinese culture in Singapore, come to Singapore's Chinatown at the Chinatown MRT stop. It comes up right there at that escalator, and this is the cleanest Chinatown you'll find outside of the one in Yokohama, Japan. Chinatown is also home to the Buddha Tooth Relic Museum that is said to house a relic of an original Buddha tooth. Chinatown is also hot. If you come at the right time, you might even get to see one of their worship services. In Chinatown, it's about the only place in Singapore that you will find street vendors. So enjoy the street vending while you're here. And it's also the most orderly and organized and clean street market I think I've seen. You stop by the Little India neighborhood to experience a little bit of India. There are some narrow alleyways, lots of small shops, good places for souvenirs. It's a little chaotic, very colorful, uh, and also a good place to get some Indian food, believe it or not. Little India also seems to be home to Singapore's jewelry and pawn shop industry, conveniently located right next to each other. On this corner is a pawn shop located next to a jewelry shop, next to a pawn shop, next to a jewelry shop. And this building is one of the last surviving Chinese residences in Little India. 
Now that is colorful. So in all my travels, this is a first. This is truly an open air laundromat. And everything's convenient in Singapore to food because you just look over this way and there's an open air food court. So you can have a little bit to eat while you're doing your laundry. And right next to the food court is a restaurant that serves a $15 fish head special every day. Sweet. And finally, Little India is also home to some temples with some really long names. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one. To experience the Arabian culture in Singapore, come to Kampong Glam, which is home to the Sultan Mosque. There was a sultan that actually lived here in 1823, right next to this mosque. There's a street called Arab Street, and uh, Right in front of the mosque, there's one way to beat the heat is with a cool and refreshing fresh chopped coconut with a straw to drink the cool and refreshing lukewarm coconut juice. So after you drink the coconut, you can then have them cut the coconut open, chop it in half, and they give you a spoon and you can eat the coconut. I thought this would be cooling, but it turns out that Coconuts left outside get just as hot as me. So after eating this coconut, I'm still sweating. Maybe my coconut needs a little bit of a sweat wipe. Kampong Glom is a neat little neighborhood to walk around. There is a pedestrianized shopping street in front of the mosque, uh, which is a great place for souvenirs. Arab Street is Singapore's home to carpet vendors, where you will find carpets, carpets, and even more carpets. Adjacent to Arab Street is Haji Lane, which is a small, narrow alleyway that is home to a number of small, trendy designer clothing stores. The mecca of shopping in Singapore is on Orchard Road that has rows and rows of shopping malls on both sides of the street. And this is one good place to beat the heat because all these malls are air conditioned on the inside. Orchard Road has all the famous brands like Louis Vuitton and Chanel. One of the newest shopping centers is the Ion Orchard Shopping Center, which lights up a neat blue color at night. It's a number of different floors of shopping extravaganza, but my favorite part of Ion Orchard is the food court on basement level four. Check it out for some tasty eats. For some of the best views in Singapore, stop by the Marina Bay Sands Sky Park. It is this skateboard-like thing atop of the three towers of this newest casino. And from here, the views of Singapore are truly spectacular. Just behind where I was standing is a wonderful view of Singapore's central business district with all of the futuristic-looking high-rises. You can also see the Singapore Flyer Ferris wheel. And on the back side of the Sky Park, you can see the Gardens by the Bay. The final attraction that I'll mention is something that any animal lover should visit, and that is the Singapore Zoo. It is world famous for its open plan concept with very few fences. Here are some kids getting up close and personal with a kangaroo, and they also have some really neat animal shows. Here is Pedro the Sea Lion. And the final attraction that anybody will see on their visit to Singapore, and it's definitely a must-see, is Changi Airport. It's been rated one of the best airports in the world, and I definitely agree. Terminal 3, this terminal that you're looking at, is the newest area, and this is the check-in area, and now we're looking at the area behind security. On the right of the picture is a food court that is open 24 hours a day. This airport is stocked with some amazing amenities, including the world's largest slide in an airport. It also has its own in-airport convenience store that definitely has the largest selection of cold beverages I've ever seen in an airport. If that's not enough, there's also a in-airport butterfly garden. Yes, that's right, a garden with real butterflies in an airport. If butterflies aren't your thing, there's also a in-airport koi pond for the goldfish watching extraordinaire. If you're not into either butterflies or goldfish, you could also spend your time at the airport bar playing the airport pool table. If all those aren't enough amenities for you, this one is sure to do it. When you go through passport control, they have a little basket of complimentary mints so that they will ensure your breath is minty fresh on your flight home from Changi Airport.
Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe.